Welcome to our 2019 Salmon Schools. My name is Russell Gahagan from The Real Shot. Uh, welcome back. We're starting our first Salmon School of 2019 with Trolling Divers 101. This is kind of a, a basic, to some extent, uh, school or episode, I should say. Um, and the thought process here is to go over the different types of trolling divers that are on the market and that we sell that are used today on the Great Lakes for trout and salmon fishing. So let's start in. Basically at this point, um, we'll start with kind of the original um, trolling diver that was used heavily on, on the Great Lakes, which was the Lure Jensen Dipsy Diver. Uh, here's an example of the size one, which is kind of known as the standard size Lure Jensen Dipsy Diver. Um, the other size that's used a lot uh, today is the size three, also known as the Magnum, uh, Lure Jensen Dipsy Diver. So the concept here um, with this diver is it's a directional trolling diver. You can turn this dial on the back either direction to make this diver uh, kick out and down away from the boat so that you can take your lures away from the boat and spread them out away from your downriggers. The other thought process here is that you can tie a leader from here back to your lure uh, to kind of create some stealth in between the diver itself and your bait. And the leader length, we get a lot of questions about that, definitely changes and is uh, something that each individual fisherman sort of prefers their own length. We like them kind of 12 to 15 feet, and that's 12 to 15 feet of line after we put a snubber on, and I'll go into the snubbers in a minute, um, but we'll attach a snubber here, and then a 12 to 15 foot uh, section of mono leader. So if you go too much further than 12 to 15 foot, it becomes a hazard to net. You already may have to hand over hand the line um, with a 12 to 15 foot leader. If you go much shorter than 12 to 15 foot, some fishermen feel that it's too close to the diver and it's not stealthy enough. Um, so that's kind of where that leader length discussion is. Um, so being that the Lure Jensen Dipsy Diver was the original, there's a couple things with this diver that is makes it sort of unique to the others. Um, it still has these rings that you can take on and off the diver. Um, so if you want to, uh, to make this Magnum Diver have less surface area, you can take the ring off just like that. And now you just have the diver itself and it will not achieve the same depth range that it will if it has the diver, uh, ring on it, excuse me. Um, the downside to that is those rings can fall off they can be difficult to get back on, um, and it is sort of also a hazard if they do come off in the water um, for the fish. Uh, I have seen pictures and videos of fish that uh, have gotten these diver or these rings stuck around them, and obviously can hurt and harm the fish. So, a few years back, I'm not sure exactly sure how many years ago, um, there was a product called the Deeper Diver developed. It was actually originally developed by Walker Downriggers, now is owned by Dreamweaver. Um, and that diver was designed sort of to mimic the Lure Jensen Dipsy Diver. Uh, but a couple of concepts were added to sort of improve from the original design of the Dipsy Diver. One, you can see there's no ring. The ring is molded into the diver. So the diver is one size. That size is based on with the ring. Um, so you don't have the advantage of taking it off, but on the other hand, you don't have the disadvantage of worrying about that ring coming off um, or getting damaged or anything like that. Um, two, the uh, diver in the back has a ratcheting back. On um, the Dipsy Diver, it has a free-flowing back. So it, it has a tendency to slide around a little bit more uh, because it's free-flowing. The Dreamweaver Deeper Diver has a ratcheting back, so each setting has a click tends to stick in its position a little bit better. Um, also, uh, it's just got a, a little bit better quality components in my opinion. Um, the screws, the swivels, things like that are just a little bit higher quality. Um, overall, they're, they're pretty similar other than the uh, ring design. Uh, both fairly the same concept, um, same idea. You put the leader behind the um, diver with a snubber, and that's your setup. I'm gonna show you a couple different kinds of snubbers today. Um, we stock two different kinds here at the Real Shop. 
Uh, we stocked the stocked the Warrior Clear Snubber. Uh, this is an 18 inch one. This is our most popular seller. Um, the other one we stock is the Lure Jensen Great Lakes Snubber. This is a 12 inch model, kind of the economy model. I think this one retails for $5.99. The Warrior's like $8.99. Um, both of them will work fine. Both of them are adequate. Um, just kind of depends on your personal preference. So that 12 to 15 foot leader that I talked about that's pretty common, that's after this snubber. So either the 12 inch or the 18 inch snubber, um, then the 12 to 15 foot leader of line, and then your bait. So that kind of explains the two different models of divers. Now they also, like I said, come in the two different sizes. So in the Lure Jensen, you got the Magnum with, with the ring here, and then the standard size one. They also make some other sizes, but these are the two most popular for the Great Lakes for fishing salmon and trout. And then the deeper diver, their Magnum size is known as a uh, 124 size. And that'll get you down, you know, you can get down below 100 feet with braid or, or wire line um, with this Magnum Diver pretty, pretty easily. Um, and then they have a 107 size, which is the same size as the Lure Jensen size one, the standard diver with the ring. So there's kind of your standard and your Magnum and the Dreamweaver Deeper Divers. So the next element to this is actually um, was born here in Sheboygan, Wisconsin. I think it's going on probably 20 years ago or so. I don't know the exact uh, date or details, but um, I do know the former owner and innovator um, of this product personally, or knew him personally um, before he passed. His name was Randy Evans, and he developed a product called the Slide Diver. The Slide Diver has been around, like I said, now for close to 20 years, I think. It has the same basic concepts and look as like a dipsy diver. But as the water has cleared in the Great Lakes tremendously over the past, you know, 10 to 15 years, uh, the slide diver has become a key asset for a lot of fishermen on the Great Lakes to help them catch more fish. And with the name slide in it, you can imagine sort of the concept here. The line on a, on a slide diver setup, instead of being tied to the end, passes through the diver okay which allows you to set a lead behind the diver of basically an unlimited amount if you want to put a 20 foot lead a 40 foot lead a hundred foot lead behind the slide diver you can do that and then when you're done with pulling out your lead behind the diver and you've picked your des designated spot 40 foot let's say you just go ahead and you clamp the arm of the diver down like that and now you have a 40 foot lead behind the diver the advantage here is when you get a strike, the arm will open just like a, a dipsy diver or a deeper diver to disengage the diver. But now the slide diver will just gently slide down to a barrel swivel, which you'll have six feet in front of your lure. And now you only have a six foot lead to deal with for netting purposes, but you started with a 40 foot lead or a 30 foot lead or a 50 foot lead, whatever you chose. The slide diver is a great advantage um, when fishing up high, especially in the water column, um, up in that top 30 foot of the water column. So early in the spring, um, when you're steelhead fishing, coho fishing, um, fishing for big kings around the harbor mouse, uh, the slide diver is sort of the go-to um, device. Uh, we said for a few years, boy, we wish we had a way to get the slide diver down deeper because it's a standard size you see there. Um, you know, there isn't, it's kind of maxed out at that like 30, 40 down range. Well, a few years ago they listened and they came out with what's called an ultimate kit. And the ultimate kit gives you a big ring, sort of to match the Magnum Diver type ring, and a big weight, also sort of to match the Magnum Diver weight. So what you can do is, it's actually an entire back of the slide diver with the ring. You can just simply swap out the back of your current slide diver that you own, if you have one, um, with this uh, this back here, and then attach the ring, and you now have a Magnum, so to say, slide diver, um, or an ultimate slide diver, if you want to call it that. And what that's going to allow you to do is take that concept of being able to have a little bit longer lead, but now deploy it deeper into the water column. So if it's July or August, and the, and the bite is 50, 60, 70, 80 feet down, and you want to be able to fish a little bit deeper in the water column but still have the ability to get the stuff away from the boat, um, this gives you that option. 
You may say to yourself, well, why would you use anything else? Well, one thing about the slide diver I will say is it does work really, really well. Um, but it does have a couple of, of downsides. Number one, uh, it can be a little tricky at first if you haven't used it a lot to sort of figure out the process of how to set it up and what to do. Um, and here at the real shot, we can give you a hand with that if you haven't done it before. Um, but two, when you do add that longer lead, if you do try to go deeper in the water column and get that, that diver around your other uh, baits, your downriggers, or when boards are coming in, uh, by having that real long lead, it can cause a hazard um, and can create some tangles. So you do have to be careful on how far you stretch those leads out and exactly where you put that diver so that you're not creating yourself a bunch of tangles. Um, for myself, I like to use the slide diver up high in the water column, that top 30, 40 feet. And then when I'm gonna get down deeper, I switch over to the 124 uh, Dreamweaver deeper diver. That's me personally. Um, but there's a lot of different options here, like I said. Um, let's talk a little bit about phase two of this, which is color. This is a really important part. So, and I mentioned before, as the water's cleared so much, and I, I talk a lot about that in all our schools, um, we've sort of, I guess, gravitated in a, in a volume towards two different colors of divers in the past 10 years. Clear, like this dipsy diver here, or black, like this side diver here. Uh, in the past 10 years, this has by far been our top two selling colors in divers, black and clear, no matter which brand it was. Um, and it was mainly because I think the base of fishermen were trying to be stealthy. We were trying to lengthen our lead behind the diver, and we were trying to use devices that didn't uh, spook the fish or catch the fish's eye. We wanted them to pay attention to um, the lure itself, not to the diver. Well, I think then sort of this next train of thought came in, in mind. Started to have some guys ask us to paint some divers in some specific colors, some colors that used to be made or some colors that they dreamed up or some colors that look like some spoons or flashers that they were having success with. And um, in testing that, myself um, and some other guys that I, I trust, um, we found that there were definitely times where a Deeper diver with crushed glow tape and green dots was working better than just a plain clear deeper diver. Um, it's hard to explain or hard to understand exactly why that would be, other than the water is so clear, I don't know if there's anything we can do from a stealth presentation that uh, will make it so that the fish can't feel or see this diver. So maybe it's better to use an attractive color that we know works, like green dots. Um, so, there's, so there's two trains of thought here. Um, what has happened is we've sort of set up two different sets of colors, the clear and the, and the uh, black, which are sort of our basic stock colors, so to say, that we sell high volume of and still do today. Um, and then we have this setup of custom colors that we're offering in the Dreamweaver Deeper Divers. I think we got, I don't even know, 15 maybe different colors available in the 124 size mainly. We got some in the 107 size as well. Uh, we got UVs, we've got glows, we've got blacks, we got greens, we got blues. Um, and then we also started painting them in the standard size uh, Dipsy Diver. And I think we're going to start painting some in the Magnum size Dipsy Diver as well for the guys that like the original Lure Jensen Dipsy Diver. This is a, a UV Super Frog pattern here that's been a real popular seller. Um, so whether you like bright fancy colors or whether you like the clearer black sort of uh, stock stealth presentation, I think that's a personal preference. I have seen both uh, both work now. I've been in tournament situations on a boat where guy on the other side of the boat running the boat was using a custom diver and was getting bit. I wasn't getting bit with a black one, switched to a uh, custom painted deeper diver, same bait and bang, fired instantly. Um, over the years, I've made a lot of money tournament fishing, won a lot of money tournament fishing, I should say, on black and clear divers. So there's a lot of times where I feel like that's been that's been the deal for me. Um, I'm gonna kind of explain one more time sort of the concept of divers. Uh, so the diver itself has a adjustment. All three of these have an adjustment on the back, a dial that you can turn. And that dial basically um, changes the angle of the weight. And when that weight angle changes, what's gonna happen is the the amount of that weight is gonna pitch the diver like this and force the diver to angle to the side of the boat and down. The more angle it has, the higher it'll be in the water column and the further away from the boat, 
the less angle it has, the deeper it'll go, and the, and the uh, deeper down in the water column it's gonna be, closer to the boat it's gonna be. Uh, a lot of guys are running two divers aside, or four dipsies as we call it, four divers. Um, so guys say, well, well, how do you do that? Well, what you'd like to do there is you wanna run your outside diver, or we call it high diver, the one furthest away from the boat, at either a three or a four setting, uh, so it's got much more of a pitched angle, so it stays up high and gets away from the boat like this. And then your your closer diver to the boat should be your deeper diver, not the, not necessarily that brand, but yeah, could be your deeper diver. Uh, should be your like magnum sized diver here. That should be on like a one or a one and a half setting, so that that has a uh, little less pitch but dives a little bit deeper. So this is kind of what it would look like here if you had the you know the high diver at a higher pitch away from the boat and the low diver deeper closer to the boat this is kind of your uh, your angle you're going to have here and this is what it should look like if you would set this up accordingly if you have any questions please let me know at 920-395-2079 all of these products are available at www.therealshot.com uh, thanks for enjoying our first episode of the 2019 salmon school on trolling divers Good luck fishing this year.